Thank you for this. Uh, I'm Meredith Wilson, and I'm one of the bioscience analysts uh, here at PVI in the Cybernetic Infrastructure Division. And today I'm going to be talking about an ongoing effort at CID to make working with whole genome data more accessible to infectious disease epidemiologists and public health workers through CID's online Pathosystem Resource Integration Center, aka Patrick. At present, the field of infectious disease molecular epidemiology, um, as it's practiced in health departments across the US, uh, it's mostly based on older lab diagnostic techniques and analysis such as uh, serology and pulse field gel electrophoresis. And this is all very well and good, um, but the fact of the matter is large dated and don't supply very high resolution data on individual strains compared to the data you could get from whole genome sequences. An issue particular to serology is that it requires blood samples which you may or may not actually have access to. Um, or actually be able to get, gather samples for. And uh, pulse gel electrophoresis are really only good and comparable if they are being generated within an individual laboratory or extensively standardized networked labs, such as those belonging to PulseNet, um, the, the results of which cannot really be compared to anything outside of PulseNet, so it's not great for uh, international outbreaks or non-PulseNet labs. And here's just a quick slide detailing the kind of band migration that, that can occur with pulse gels when different lab protocols are used in different institutes, and the problem in general with using continuous markers for molecular typing methods. And keep in mind that during some outbreaks, epidemiologists have to look at hundreds of these, so taking longer than 60 seconds to figure out whether or not you're looking at the same strain is already taking too long and can lead to results that are uh, mostly subjective. So given this, there's been sort of a trend towards using more uh, sequence-based markers that are categorical in nature, such, as the, um, such that the results can be shared between institutions and uh, between countries. And uh, by far the most popular of uh, these typing methods has been the multi-locus sequence typing, or MLST. Um, not surprisingly, it's been touted as the sort of newish gold standard for international uh, portable pathogen subtyping for epidemiological purposes. And here's just a really quick rundown of how MLST works for those that don't already know about it. Um, basically what you do is you go and sequence about five to eight um, housekeeping genes, depending on what pathogen you're looking at. And uh, here uh, each gene variant is assigned a different number. And when those number combinations are put together, that makes up the profile for that MLST sequence type. So one of the ways that MLST gets used in epidemiological studies and outbreak investigations specifically is for pathogen source attribution, where say I've got a whole bunch of cases of Campylobacter up here uh, that are related to contaminated foodstuffs and I want to know exactly what foods those are. So I round up my cases and I extract uh, pathogen DNA from those cases and I run MLST on everything and it turns out that a certain portion of my cases can be attributed to the uh, MLST subtype Campylobacter that likes to hang out in chicken, and another portion that likes to hang out in cows over here. So now that I've talked about how great MLSTs are, um, I'm going to tell you that it's not good enough. Um, <laughs> for one thing, um, MLSTs by sequencing individual genes um, is expensive, um, and in fact, the price of whole genome sequencing will soon eclipse that of MLST. And, and it kind of requires a sort of wet lab experience that you're not actually likely to find in a lot of health departments, believe it or not. Um, also with the promise of, of sort of turnkey countertop sequencing options not far down the road, uh, many people in the public health sector are kind of looking in the direction of whole genome sequencing for the next suite of bacterial typing methods. However, there are is a slight uh, problem with getting epidemiologists working with whole genome data. And that's that most epidemiologists have absolutely no training whatsoever in um, bioinformatics. And uh, even if they had access to sequence data from their samples, they wouldn't know what to look for or what to do with it when they came across it. So one of the solutions that we're working on in the Patrick project is to make a freely available virtual MLST tool that extracts MLST sequence type from assembled bacterial genome data and combining that with our collection of manually curated 
uh, renal inspector genes, which my colleague David Abraham will be talking on later on today, so come to that talk as well. Um, and there's also a corresponding poster outside in the gallery if you want to take a look at that. Um, anyway, the whole point of combining um, an already well-established and accepted typing method with manually curated genes is that it will allow epidemiologists in the public health sector to continue doing their jobs while expanding their knowledge of pathogen genetics and bioinformatics. Because it's important to remember that the outbreaks are not going to stop while the public health workers catch up with emerging techniques in bioinformatics. There has to be a bridge between the currently accepted techniques and the newly emerging ones. And uh, something like this right here is a very good step in that direction, I think. As far as outbreak investigations are concerned, the real benefit of combi combining MLST sequence type with the uh, virulence genes is that it allows epidemiologists to sort out false positives within their samples. Because sometimes there's variance within the virulence factors of strains that aren't reflected in the housekeeping genes. And that can really affect disease outcome and uh, therefore have a confounding effect on calculations like uh, attack rate of pathogenic strains. Variants within genes of the same MLS MLST uh, sequence type that are related to virulence is actually really not all that uncommon. And uh, here I've got a recent example that I pulled up on uh, the Patrick website. Um, here I've got uh, genes or um, strains from the Germany outbreak and um, a closely related gene that is not an outbreak strain but is uh, enteroaggressive. Um, and is usually associated with things like traveler's diarrhea, which is a self-limiting condition that is by no means lethal. So if you run the MLST on these strains, they come up as being the same sequence type. However, if you were to pull these strains up on the Patrick protein family sorter tool, as I've done here, you would see right away that there are differences within the virulence genes of these pathogens that amount to extremely different disease outcomes. Since uh, sugar toxin producing E. coli causes hemolytic uremic syndrome, which can be very lethal, and here we see the strains from the Germany outbreak are positive for sugar toxin 2, whereas the uh, enteroaggressive non-outbreak strain does not have it at all. So this is a pretty big difference, and it has the potential to be a very big confounder, especially in a big international outbreak where a lot of people are coming to hospitals and. Uh, some people have traveler diarrhea, where the other ones actually have something that could progress to uh, something incredibly nasty. So it, it's good to get that sorted out. All right, give everybody a nice science art slide, because why not? Um, so clearly, it would be a good thing for um, invest, uh, excuse me, infectious disease epidemiologists to be able to quickly look at bacterial genes that are related to virulence and the uh, disease outcome in addition to using MLST sequence typing. And the hope is that over time we'll be able to expand the range of genes that epidemiologists get to look at such that they can utilize whole bacterial genome data and uh, give them ways to do that that are um, quickly learned and easily comprehensible and uh, hopefully will help them help us not get sick. So. Uh, thanks to everybody, especially those that manually curate virulence factors, because it's not a fun job, <laughs> and to our funding agencies. And if you have any questions, I would love to take them. Thanks. Thank you. 